welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Sue of Bend and Stretch with Sue, and in today's video, I am bringing you a session that I've done live on Zoom with my students, and it's a weighted Pilates class. So if you've been here for one of these before, you may know that I typically use two pound weighted Pilates balls, as well as some five pound dumbbells for some of the exercises, and uh, some 10 pound dumbbells as well. Now I alternate in my use of these weights depending on the exercise. You can go ahead and do these completely without weights or even if you don't have any weights and you want to add a little bit more resistance you could simply use some filled up water bottles. Um, but with that, uh, be sure to subscribe. And if you haven't, I'd love it if you consider and give me one of these if you like it, as well as hitting that notification bell. So you'll know when I upload new content, you can check it out and check me out in the next video. So let's get going now. Loosening up those kinks in the neck, shoulder, upper back, chest, and from here, let's walk the hands back in toward the feet and slowly unroll to bring ourselves up to standing nice and tall again. Let's scoop those arms up nice and wide, stretch for the, reaching for the sky, let the hips melt forward as you inhale long, and then exhale, dive down. Inhale to flatten the back. Let's walk those hands away, coming to the top of the mat, firing up the body as we lower down, maybe just hovering above the mat and scooping the heart through to come into your upward dog, keep it to cobra if you like, and then press it right back to your downward dog. Let's shift the hips a little bit side to side here as we walk things out. And as you take your right hand to the center top of your mat, take your left hand over to your right ankle or your heel or your knee, whatever you're able to reach. Give it a pull and then turn to look up toward the sky. Breathe into that open space here, that right lung, and then release it. Let's bring the left hand where the right one was and reach for that left ankle or the lowest point you can comfortably reach. Pull and look toward the sky. So getting those obliques stretched out here because we're going to be working those a fair bit today. As you release it, let's walk the hands toward the feet, soften the knees, slowly unroll and bring it up to standing nice and tall. So from here you should feel that you started to lubricate the spine, the hips, and we can go ahead and pick up our weights. So we'll begin with picking up, I'm going to go with um, one of my heavier weights, but I'm only going to take one of the weights, and from the top of my mat, standing nice and tall, I'm going to extend my, I can bring my left arm out to the side or just keep it on the hip if you like. And from here, stepping back with the right foot and lifting up to come into a, a dead lift, a single leg dead lift, and bringing it back up again. Now, from here, you're going to start to challenge those deep core muscles. So make sure that you're engaging the powerhouse as you continue to bring that weight down, reaching back with your opposite leg. Now, if it's too much to do it with a balance, you can just keep those big toes grounded or the big toe grounded on your right foot. You only have one there. As you continue to work on the dead lift. Now be just full of what's going on in the upper body. Try not to reach down by lowering your shoulders, but rather kicking right at that left hip crease. So we're going to do another three on the side. Typically you'll find with these, one side is a little bit more wobbly than the other, especially when we get started. And let's do one more. Bring that 
relax your right down your knees right here. Switching the weight into your opposite hand and you're going to bring your arm out to the side. So standing nice and tall here. And again, reset your form. Make sure that you've got that little bit of a lift in the pelvic floor. That's going to give you the power in the powerhouse. Open through the chest. Step back with the left foot and lower down. Pass you in and right. So remember, if you, this is your more wobbly side, you're going to keep the big toe down on your mat and focus on still having that weight primarily in your front leg, but really, really paying attention to that hinging that is occurring at your right hip. Let's keep this for you alive. Taking your time. Let's keep this for you alive. We're walking this day as you feel working on four more of these. What a way to start. Use your breath on the easier part of the movement. So when you are coming up, that's when you're going to breathe in. When you're going down, concentrating, working really hard when you're breathing out. Down to the last two. Ooh, one more. And ah, bring it back. Whew, shake out the legs and from here, I'm going to switch over to my medium weight, you could go ahead and use a light weight, but what I'm doing here is coming into, again, just using one weight is going to force my weight to work harder as I try to stabilize. So taking the weight in my right hand, reach it up by the ear, and I'm going to step back with my left foot. As I hold that weight and bend that left knee to press my weight back up again as a leg straightens. So bending and straightening. As always, when we're working with lunges, we want to make sure that we are moving very smoothly up and down rather than forward and back. That's going to make a difference for your knee, especially that front leg. You want to be conscious of really grounding through that front heel, as well as the ball of the foot. But you're really trusting the firm of the heel first, and that's going to help you to fire those big muscles, rather than putting a lot of pressure on your knee. You also want to make sure your knee is not coming way ahead of your ankle. Preferably right above the like behind. From here, let's step it in. Bring that weight down and let's switch it over to the other side. So taking the arm up right alongside the ear. So keeping it firm. Make sure that shoulder is also staying down. And when you're ready, powerhouse engage to be back with the right foot. So it's got to be a big enough stance so that the front knee is in a good position as you bend and straighten. Now on the straightening of the leg, you want to make sure that you maintain a little micro bend so you're not locking out your knee each time. You also do the same thing with the arm that's extended, making sure you've got that little bend through front heel and ball of your back foot. Moving smoothly up and down. Probably should start with these ones just to get used to the balance. But the more struggle there is with the balance, that's a good thing. It challenges your brain and your core to work together. So last one here. Bring it up and step it in and release that weight. From here, taking, um, I'm gonna stick with my medium weight. Now you could 
drop down to a light weight, and we're coming into a windmill motion. So setting up the feet much the same way that you would do if you were coming into yoga triangle pose. So the one foot has the outer edge parallel to the outer, as the back edge of your mat, while the other toes are pointed straight ahead. Now the legs are comfortable distance apart, not too wide. And from here, you're going to take the same arm as the toes that are pointing straight ahead. It's reaching up overhead. Your other arm is going to slide down toward the ankle. So wherever it is most comfortable for you to reach, keeping the top arm extended. So that's why you don't want to have too heavy of a weight here. And you want to keep that arm extended straight up and keeping your body moving in a side motion. So if you notice my shoulders, they're both facing forward. My hips are both facing forward as well. So the body is squared to that long edge of your mat if you're standing on your mat. So let's finish with another two on this side. And lots of good work for the obliques and the shoulder. Bring it back up and lower that weight down. Let's switch it over. So taking the feet in the opposite positioning. Take that other weight, or the same weight in the other arm, reaching it up, holding it in place. And remember the hip slides out to the side as you lower yourself down. So good for those obliques. Your powerhouse is on here. So you do want to maintain that 30 to 50% engagement in the pelvic floor because that will give you the stability you require. And at the same time, you don't want to be clenching. So you don't want to be going beyond that 50%. So it's really a matter of really training your body to engage in that manner when you're challenging it with weight or whether that's physical weights that you're lifting, could be a grocery bag even, or just the weight of your own body when you're doing functional activities. So we've got one last one here. Bring it up and release it down. Excellent. So shake out the legs a little bit. And from here, I'm going to go ahead and keep my lighter weight still, holding on to it in my right arm. And I'm going to feel a little bit wider than hip width. So standing tall, turning the toes out slightly, and bring that weight to my shoulders. From here, I'm going to sink, pressing the knees open, and sinking weight into my heels, pressing the weight up. And sink and press. So as I press, try to keep your body as squared as possible. So what we want to avoid is a reaching over like this. For this one, we're going straight up and straight down. Weight in the heels. Toes are light. Ball of the foot is well grounded, so we create that suction cup like motion with our feet. And last one right here. We're going to come down in the spot. We're going to stay here, hold it here. And let's add in some pulses for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Stand it up, switch it over, bring the weight to your shoulder here. Take a nice breath in, exhale, and reach. Inhale as you come down, and exhale. Again, try to keep that body nice and straight and centered. So if you're having a weight to one side, you've got to work a little bit harder to get stabilized. We kind of get used to it when we've got the weights on both sides to kind of compensate. So it's good to just confuse those muscles on a regular basis so they don't really know what's coming next. And in that way, you continue to build some unilateral strength 
And from here, we're going to come down, hold it at the bottom, press into your heels, keep your chest lifted, and let's pulse it for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and bring it up and release it. So you're going to release your weight, shake out the arms a little bit, shake out the legs, and from here, we're going to open up the chest, put the thumbs down, and bring the hands behind the back, and just give yourself a really good opening into the heart center, into the shoulders as well. We've done a lot with the shoulders already. And when you're ready to go, I'm going to move on to a heavier weight. But again, I'm only picking up on one of the weights to come into a goblet squat. So I'm going to keep my, actually I'm going to make more of a sumo goblet squat. So take the feet quite wide apart. Again, the toes are pointing out, engaging that powerhouse, taking the breath in at the top, exhaling to come down and pause for one, squeeze all the way back up again, and breathe in, breathe out, pause, come down as low as you can, and squeeze. So you want to try to get your bottom down in line with your knees as you squeeze those glutes to make your way back up again. Down and left. Sink and lift. Again. So we've got another four. Another two. Last one, hold it here, hold it, and see if they come up onto the balls of the feet while you're here. Balancing the balls, so you can the chest, lift the heels, stay lifted. Can you balance here now a little pulse for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and bring that down. Let's release on that weight. And shake out the legs. We can do a little bit of a quad stretch here. So you can take a hold of the foot, take a hold of your pant leg, stretch the arm up to open up, and point that knee down, draw the inner thighs toward each other. Let's switch it up to the other side. So bring that in, opening through the heart. Pull that belly button in towards your spine. It'll help you with your balance as well. And bring it down. From here, we are going to add some bicep curls as we continue to work legs, glutes, core, but we're going to make it into a curtsy squat movement. So starting out with the arms at our sides as we step back with the left foot over to the right and turn, squeezing those forearms toward the bicep and back. We're going to keep going on the right side. Squeeze and back. So sink and release. So making it a nice big step, that back knee coming barely close to the floor, certainly not touching the floor, but you least have that sensation of really working inner and outer thighs. So last, or second last one here, one more on this side and bring it over. And as we switch it over to the opposite side, we'll stick with our curtsy lunges. However, we're going to make it a hammer curl. So we're bringing, we just keep, instead of twisting and turning, we're just going to lift and squeeze. So take an inhale, open up, and as you exhale, step it back, squeeze. Again, forearms coming toward your biceps. So flex those muscles, even if you drop the weights, decide to do this with that weight, you want to make sure that you are giving a good squeeze every time you bring the weight up to the top. You're not trying to touch your shoulders. You're simply trying to bring that form as close as possible to your biceps. Let's do one last one. And bring it back in. And release from here. I'm switching over to my heavier weights. 
overhead. So you can stay with what you have now. We're going to simply be holding the arms at our sides and I'm going to bring my heels in for that perfect Pilates stance as I turn the toes out, zippering the legs in together as I lift up. Lifting up those heels away from the mat as much as I can. I want to come up as far as the shoulders, up to the ears, and then go to work. Inhale, and exhale. Squeeze and lift, and release. We've got eight more. I'm really testing the balance here. This is so good for those inner thighs as well as the glutes. And it's great for the development of the soles of your feet, those muscles as well. They tend to be, especially in the winter time in our hemisphere, they tend to be cooped up in shoes all the time which is not necessarily the best thing for the soles of our feet. So that's why it's so good to be able to do some form of exercise that encourages you to keep the shoes off, work the soles of the feet, and keep those heels together. Hold it here on this one, hold it, hold it. I think the foot feels lifted, slide the shoulders down, keep the chest up, Lift up those legs, keep those heels off the floor, that's out our pulses for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, lower down, and shake out those legs, and shake out the arms, all legs, take a nice big breath in here, bring the arms up into legs, the fingers, and just leaning into one side, pushing the hips out, to give yourself a nice stretch, especially in the sides of the body. We've worked at the obliques a considerable amount so far. And bring it back. From here, we move to the, we're gonna start to make our way down. So you're going to take your weights and whatever weights of your choice. I'm gonna go with my medium weights and bring them to one end of the mat as I move to the other end of the mat. So from here, standing and tall, let's come back into that full body stretch as we open the anterior body and exhale, dive it down into a standing pose. Take an inhale, lengthen through the back and walk the hands away. To come into downward dog, we we'll return here once again and bring the knees right above the mat. So bring your hands to the right under your shoulders, knees above the mat. So they're not touching if possible. Stay here, we're reaching the head through, reaching the right leg back, and in. Reach and in. Try to keep your body square here. Reach and bring it back for four, five, that upper back nice and broad. Six. Keep the neck long. Seven. Eight. Nine. And ten. Bring the knees down. Oh, push it back into a shell stretch, child's pose. And restore, recover. Breathe. Bad news is we have two sides, so we're going to have to do that again on the opposite side. But first, let's loosen up the spine, moving through two rounds of cow and cat. Ah, breathe in, get this long through the front body, bring it out to round the back. And bring it back to your table position. Ready to do the other side. So make sure. You've got some softness in your elbows. It's going to be tougher on this side because the muscles are all stabilized. It's starting to get tired, so as are the arms. Now, if you need to, you can always modify and come down to your forearms and simply work in the low one leg, keeping the other knee on the floor. So that would be the option. Or you can start out with both knees in the switch 
So let's come on up when you're ready. Tuck those toes under your knees, hover. So you don't want to have them too high. So if you'll notice my hips and my shoulders, they're pretty much in line with each other. We want to keep them up. We don't want the hips popping up. Let's add in that leg as we reach the left leg back. For one, two, breathing in when it's easy. Breathe out when it's harder. We got four here. Got some shaking going on. Five. Six. Four, four more. Seven. Eight. Nine. Oh, wait for me one last one. Bring it in. Bring it down. Bring those big toes together and sneeze apart. Back and do a stretch past this position here. <sighs> Enjoy it. So that was a lot of work for your arms as well as your core and that working leg too. So, so, so much going on in that bare plank position. So from here, I'm going to step the right foot forward picking up the, my medium weight and just bringing it into a row. So my other hand can be out to the side, I can place it on the hip and I'm going to simply focus on lifting the elbow up and bringing it down. So lift, you want to feel a squeeze in the back of your arm as you lift it. So it's a gliding kind of motion. You're breathing in at the bottom, breathing out as you squeeze and on your way up. So think about really focusing your mind in the muscles that you are working. That's how you're going to get results. So you don't want to go on autopilot here. You really want to concentrate on what's going on. Hold it at the top. Draw that elbow in. So don't let it flare out to the side. Make sure you tuck them in. And keeping your wrist right underneath your elbow, you're keeping, keeping your elbow as best as you can in the line of the shoulder, collarbones open, and let's add some smooth pulses for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and release sit down. Ah, oh, press your hips back, reach the fingertips forward, lift the toes up if you can, bringing your belly over top of that thigh. And bring it back down again. So we're going to work the same arm. We're going to take the weight, actually I'm going to switch over to my lighter weight here. I don't want to overdo on that shoulder. So as I hold on here, the weight starts up under my shoulder and keeping your, the body square, lifting straight out to the side. So it is a fly, a rear fly here as we lift, opening and closing again. You're never throwing your arm up. You are squeezing it up. Breathe in when it's easy. Breathe out as you lift it. Keep your body square. If you reach your head out of your spine so that you really focus on elongating. Put some pressure into your front heel as well. Let your toes be relaxed and restful on that foot. And bring it up, hold it up. So hold it above the shoulder, at least in line with or slightly below. Let's pulse it for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, two, one, and bring it down. Ah, once again, push those hips back. Place your left hand under your shoulder and reach up with your right arm. Ah, big, big stretch here. Maybe you're able to lift up your toes on your right foot, pressing through the heel, looking up, and bring that down, and slide the knee under, push it back, bring the arms alongside your legs, and rest. Slowly unroll yourself. Let's attack the opposite side. So I'm going to just turn around here, just overall giving you a better visual 
um, of what's going on as I begin with my left foot. No, sorry. Opposite foot. So going the other way here. The other foot is forward, pressing into that heel, leaning forward. So belly is not resting on my thigh, it's hovering above it, which causes me to keep my core engaged. Arm starts in low and lifting in. At the top, it's always a squeeze. So we worked the biceps when we were doing those curtsy lunges. So now we're working the opposing muscles as we work on the triceps with these rows. So always controlling the way up, controlling the way down. It'd be so easy to just kind of go through the motion and you know, it may look like you're doing the right thing, but it's all about the sensation and really engaging the mind as well as the muscles in the limbs that you're working. So we want it all. We want to get our brain working with our muscle awareness. That's how we develop stronger and healthier bodies too. We just don't want to get strong and out of balance. So as you bring it up, so hold it up this time. Keep that elbow <coughs> nice and lifted. And the hand under your elbow. Let's pulse it out for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And bring it down. Ah, press it back, belly over thigh. Nice little stretch here. As you lift the toes, perhaps pressing through the heel, breathing lots of length in your spine. And from here, let's bring that foot back down. And we are moving into our flies. So one-sided fly as we lift. Actually, go back some balance as well to the lighter weight as we lift it to the side and down. <clears throat> Squeeze at the top and Squeeze on the way down. It's as if you're trying to squeeze the air between your ribcage and your bicep. As you bring the arm in close to you, lift it and bring it down. Continue to press into your front heel. You'll find one side, probably here in the hips as well, is a little tougher. I know I am. I'm finding this side tougher than the other for my leg. Not so much the arm. So let's do two more. And on this one, we hold it. We hold it here. Let's pulse it for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and bring it down. Press that back. Oh, lift that ball of the foot, toes away from the mat, melt at the top of the leg. You can stay there, you can add a little rotation here as you keep pressing through that heel. Lots of length in the leg, lots of length in the arms and with the chest through. And release it. Bring yourself back to our starting position. From here, I am going to use one of my weights and you can place it over on my left outer edge of the mat. So placing my hand on that weight so I don't want it so narrow that it's still on my mat and I will place the other hand in line. Now backing up the knees, I may want to opt, I'm going to stay on the mat here, so I may opt for a half push-up position as we work into a lopsided push-up, chest push-up. Now I tuck the toes under and make it a straight line from head to the heel as we continue. So be sure that you're joining me here, not just watching me, as we press through, particularly that right hand, and use a little left one for stabilizing. Let's do one more from here. Bring these down and push it back. Slowly unroll yourself. Let's come into a little bit of a stretch here. You can sit on your heels or you can stay up on your knees if it is a little too difficult for you to sit on the 
the heel, stick your right hand between your shoulder blades, take your left hand on that elbow, press it down towards your lower back, look up in front of you and just breathe as you can. It's so good to stretch and reward those muscles. And then take your arms up, switch sides, left hand comes between your shoulder blades, lifting your gaze, breathing into it. Opening things up. Feels so good. Make that space to breathe into. More oxygen equals more energy and release it. Roll out the shoulders. Once again, we've got one more side to go. So let's take that weight to bring it onto the opposite side. So if you were doing a half push up, maybe you can challenge yourself a little bit more. Try from your toes. And if you've just had enough from your toes, then drop down to the knees, but don't give up. You could skip repetitions too. You could do every second one. So with the hands in place, ready to go, chest nice and proud and open, tucking those toes under, strong through the legs, breathe in and breathe out. Continuing on here as we engage powerhouse. We press through that left hand, especially we ground through the other. Make sure your whole body is coming down at once. Do not bringing your head down first. I see that a lot in class. And one more. <laughs> Bring it down. <sighs> Push it down. Ah. And rest and breathe. Slowly unroll. Come on up. Opening your arms nice and wide. Bring the right arm in front. Take the left one and wind it underneath, and bring the palms together if you can. Back to the hands or hands to elbows. Oh, it's just good to stretch those muscles. Breathe with the elbows a little bit higher. And unwind, open it up. Big stretch. Take your left arm in front, right one goes under. Wind them together. Lift up those elbows. Breathe in. Release those shoulders down. Breathe. Make sure you hydrate along the way and release. A little shrug in the shoulders. And from here, we're going to move into a plank once again. But we're not staying there very long, so don't panic. Keep the hands in line with your shoulders instead of wide, like we just had them. So now we fire up the triceps as we start off in a high plank and slow with control, bring ourselves down to our mat. From here, stretching out the arms, stretching out the legs, opening up into a wide, kind of like a starfish, and these are also called parachuters, because it's like you're jumping out of a plane in with your parachute as you keep your tailbone slightly tucked, inhaling and exhaling to lift everything that you can, try to keep minimal, amount of your body touching down and bring it down again inhale and exhale lift it up squeeze through that back body and release inhale exhale lift trying to really get some air here and lower down if that's seven more let me lift and inhale exhale for six and Five, four, three more, uh, three, two, squeeze those shoulder blades toward each other. We've got one last one. Make it the best one as you lift. Really, really getting air here as you squeeze everything in the back body and release it down. <sighs> Let's release that lower back. Snap the hands right here to your hands. Bring your left knee up to the side. Bring your half quad back release. Breathe. Enjoy that release now. And then switch it over to the other side. And release. Come on back as you bring hands where they were when you make your way down. Bring them right outside of your ribs. Tuck the elbows in. 
reach the head forward, those glutes engage, legs engage, big breath in and breathe out to press yourself up, hold that, inhale, exhale, take it to downward dog, in your downward dog, lift your right leg here, give it a nice stretch, three-legged dog, bend your knee and make some circles with it in one direction. Circle in the other direction. Keep that core supporting you in stable so you're not wobbling around. Bring that leg down and switch it over to the other side. Bend, point, circle right around one way. Circle around the other way. Reach long. Float it down to look towards the space between your hands and place your bottom there as you come into a seated position. So from here, I'm going to go ahead and pick up my medium weight. So we are going to incorporate some Russian twists here as we bring ourselves nice and tall to start, open through the chest, holding on to that weight right in front of your chest. So make sure that you are bracing your back with your abdominal strength and slide those shoulders down your back as well. Don't tense up in the upper body. We want all the tension to be focused in the middle body. That's where we need it. So from here, you can keep your feet on the floor if you like, or you can float them up as we add a twist to one side and to the other side. Side to side. Now make sure you're twisting your body and not moving the weight. The weight goes with your body rather than twisting the weight. So starting from the center as we twist to the left, extending the right leg, bring it back to the center, over to the left, extend the right to the left leg, and continue side to side, or keep the legs down, keep them on the floor. Maybe doing both legs. Let's do one more. Whatever variety you like, go on each side. And bring it down. Set that aside. Bring the legs nice and long in front of you. And as you place your hands down, fingertips pointed straight ahead. You can bend your knees here or keep your legs straight as we fire that posterior chain, bringing the toes toward the feet, or toward the floor. So you can stay open through the chest, keeping those hips lifted. Can you keep your hips where they are while you lift one leg up and bring it down? And switch. Keep those hips still as you alternate the legs, side to side. Let's add on a little more here. Lift the leg, bring the knee in, reach it long, and float it down. Lift, bend, reach, and down. One more on each side. Lift, bend, reach, down. Last one, lift, bend, reach, down. Whew, and bring it down. Inhale it up. Reach, reach, reach. And spine stretch here. Restack your spine as you open the chest. Inhale, bring the arms up. Exhale, reach, 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 reach forward. So keeping those fingertips reaching forward, keeping the abdominal wall pressing back and unroll to come back to stacking your spine. One last time. Inhale, exhale, and slow and controlled to bring yourself back into alignment. Make sure you have enough room behind you. You also want to have access to the weight, uh, good weight selection as we bring a band to the knees and from here we roll ourselves down. So from here take yourself about three quarters of the way, holding on here, breathe as you hold and just continue to really focus on the form that is occurring right here right now in the belly, right around here, you're going to feel it. So keep that squeeze. You don't want to feel it in your back. You want to feel it, that burning perhaps going on in the belly. You also don't want to feel it in your hip flexors. 
So if you do, try bending your legs more. And from here, take another inhale. Use the exhale to roll yourself all the way down. Lengthen arms, lengthen legs, and breathe. Now as we pick up, I'm going to reach for my lighter weight, taking it in the right hand, opening up my left arm, and my right arm is out at the side, so it's kind of like the letter T, only the right uh, leg, or right arm has the weight in it. I'm going to bend my right leg and place my foot on the floor. From here, I'm going to bring my right weight up and reach across toward the left and roll it back down again. So opening up the right side, bring it back up and reach forward and over to the left side. So trying to keep the weight very, very light in my left hand. Maybe I can come up onto the fingertips of my left hand. Breathe in and breathe out and reach. And continue on. We've got five more of these. Uh, once again, we really target those obliques today. Getting that definition in the waist. And also, the obliques are so important for our stability as well as really bringing balance to both sides of the body. So we want to develop both sides evenly. So we're down to the last two, I think. I'll do two. <laughs> one more from here. Be cautious of your shoulder always. And reach and bring it down. Phew. Stretch both legs and transfer that weight over to your left hand. Bending your left foot, opening up your heart here as you reach that left arm up. So again, try to be light with your right fingertips, pressing into the floor as you reach forward and upward, but over, you're reaching across, you're going toward that left or the right corner of the room. Continuing on, and again, it's always about controlling the movement, so you never want to kind of try to get through it by throwing your arm, throwing your body. That just opens you up to the potential for injury. And you definitely want to avoid that because injuries only set you back. Uh, sometimes they can take weeks, sometimes they can take months or years to heal because depending how you got it in the first place, you may have a tendency to re-injure yourself. And that is no fun. You really want to take care of your body. Uh, and know that if you do injure yourself at any time, by taking proper care, you can really learn a lot from your injuries. I feel like that's what's happened to me a lot over the years. So as we bring ourselves to our last one here, reach it across and bring it down and release. Bring a bend to both knees and from here, you can keep the arms open as you kind of wipe your body. The legs a little bit, making sure that you do maintain release in your hips. And from here, we'll keep the heels, uh, make the culture of bottom and, and aligned with your heels, aligned with your knees, toes pointed straight ahead. So you can go ahead and use either your medium or your light weights. I think I'm going to go with medium here as I bring the arms up over top of my. Uh, shoulders, lengthening from my tailbone by engaging the pelvic floor and peeling it off away from the floor. From here I'm going to come into chest flies as I bring those weights toward each other. They don't touch. 
they just come back to their starting position and I bring them down to hover above the floor. So continue to squeeze those glutes as I stay nice and solid through the posterior and the anterior lines of my body. So I want to have total control here of everything below the collarbone as well as control of those arms. And from here, bring those weights back over the shoulders and bending at the elbow. So try to keep my upper arm nice and straight so my elbow is directly above the shoulder and straightening. Bending and straightening. So just keep those elbows as still as you can above your shoulder so that you're just using the bottom arm so the forearm is the one that's moving from the elbow joint and you bring those weights toward your head watch you don't drop them on your head keep squeezing those glutes as you hang out here so you're getting the double of the work in and last one bring it bend and lower your spine down just a mat stretch those arms out open up the whole body as you lengthen it out reaching the tippy toes away from you and walking your feet over to the bottom right corner of your mat so try to keep your hips level then take a hold of your hands to opposite elbows keeping them overhead take a breath in and as you exhale lift your head and your shoulders arms bring them to the right corner as well so you've got a really big arc so the left side of your body is lengthened here try to keep your arms down on the floor if you can and if you want extra stretch you can always cross your left ankle on top of the right one which is going to lengthen you even more so breathe into that left side as you open it up creating some space so this allows blood flow to get into those spaces it really helps the recovery process to begin and then let it go come on back to the middle here lengthen yourself out same thing here you're going to bring your legs over to the left side as far as you can to that edge hands to opposite elbow see if you can switch up um, the position of the forearms lifting and then bringing them over to the left as you place them back down again keeping those arms pressed down and bringing your uh, right ankle if you wish on top of the left stretch keep yourself open on the right side breathe into it hang it out here a little longer Feels so good to open up the outer hip. Get into the IT band a little bit here. And gluteus, medius even, getting a bit of a stretch here. And certainly those obliques. And then, oh, carefully release it. Come on back. Bring your knees into your chest. Give yourself a big hug. Rock from side to side. Massaging your back. And from here, we'll bring the left foot down as we place the right ankle over the top of that left leg. And here we go to skinny press up, open a little bit, a little bit more of a stretch in the hip flexor. You can reach through the window with your right hand, cross the back of the leg. If you want, you can even cross the front. Sometimes that can bring a little too much pressure in your left knee, so just be cautious of that. And then keep bringing it in closer and closer. Feel that glute stretch. Should feel really, really nice here. And with every breath, you can see if you can maybe have a little bit more space to bring it in closer to you. And then as you bring the left foot down, take a hold of your right ankle or foot, roll onto your left side, pull that towards you, point your knee away from you. So it's the same stretch we did, quad stretch we did when we were standing, but you can add more by crossing your left ankle on top of it. 
and when I go down, and you end up creating more stretch. So as I mentioned before, this type of stretching is awesome, but it is a very superficial, so it's important to do it. It gets the blood flow into the areas to help with your recovery, but if you can invest more time in self-massaging, it will really go a long way in uh, recovery and more balance in your body. So bring in the left knee, cross the left ankle on your right leg, and reach through the window, pull back in, uh, and continue to draw it closer and closer. Therapy balls are just amazing. If you can use them on the daily, you will definitely see some changes in your body for the better. Foam roller, a close second. And if you have one on staff, massage therapist is real good. As we bring that foot down, ah, same thing here, we'll roll onto the opposite side, reaching for the ankle or foot, pointing the knee away as you pull that heel in towards you with the option of crossing your bottom leg on the top one. Open up your shoulder as well. Uh, let it go over the knees. Bring yourself in here onto the back. Knees come in and tuck. Nose to the knees. You can begin with some rocking from side to or <coughs> front to back. Or you could do side to side too if that feels better for you. You know what your body needs right now. Uh, but repeating a few of these, let's come all the way up into seated. So from here, I will come into seated position and just allow the knees to open up as we bring the ground through the, the sit bones and press into length to create length into your spine as the top of the head reaches up, open through the heart. And take a big breath in, and as you exhale, let's just circle around a few times. So you're taking the time to slowly massage out that area of the low back and the hips. A few more repetitions in this direction. And then as you bring yourself back up to the center, I'm just going to change up the leg positioning as I bring the opposite leg in front, inhale nice and tall, and exhale, circling in the opposite direction. Uh, really, really soothing to the body, calming to the mind, linking this with your breathing because breathing is always the way to set your mental and emotional state. When we are under tension, stress, strain, we tend to breathe really shallow and faster. When we're more relaxed, we slow down our breath, we take deeper breaths, and we send our brain and bodies a message that all is well with the world. So make sure that you do some deep breathing, take some time through your day to do that. Just sit back, close your eyes, take a few deep breaths, and right now, close your eyes, and let's take a big breath in as you scoop the arms out wide for a big, beautiful stretch. Bring the hands into the heart. Take a moment to feel gratitude for giving yourself this gift of time today, your dedication, and discipline for coming to the mat. And namaste.